Hi. Hi. Hi, Mally. I'm Nicole. And today we're going to talk about the Modern Library Writers Workshop by Stephen Coach? Coach? Something? Something. Stephen K. Stephen K. What up? All right. So this is our second writing book review video. And last time we did one that was more of just kind of like how would you say it's more of just like because uh, this okay this one's more of just like a writing craft book the yeah. other one was more of like it's more like writing motivation yeah kind of. or demotivation <laughs> uh no I'm, just, I'm kidding I'm a little bit so yeah this is this one first of all I don't have my copy because I totally forgot it when we, for making this video so I won't be able to reference specific passages so I'm gonna leave that up to you but okay anything you wanted to start with um, so I was thinking I would start with the way it's structured. Yes, so the chapters are broken up. Beginnings, the writing life, shaping the story, making characters live, inventing your style, the story of the self, working and reworking, and then finishing. Which I thought was a good... Yeah. Like it just goes through basically the the writing process. Yes. So I definitely think it's a really good book for, to read um, for like the beginning writer. I've been, I read it while I'm still working through my first story. Allie read it after she's already finished a few first drafts of books. So like we definitely would probably have like a different kind of um, take from it. But for me, I really enjoyed it because the first chapter, especially or the first part of the first chapter, however it's split up, it really kind of gets down to um, starting writing and boils down to, to start, you just have to start. I like this, the rules. For the first draft, number one, do it. Number yes. two, do it quickly. Yes. That's it. I and did. I think you kind of yes. or, um, expands on that, but not, not very much. It's like this little bit. That's yeah. it. And I do like, um, it goes into a little, a little bit more with the do it quickly part, but I do like where he talks about basically just get it out there. Like, don't spend a lot of time on your first draft. Just get it out. Like it's not like it's not supposed to be a finished product it's not supposed to be good you're just trying to get the bones of the story out on paper as it were or you know on your computer you're just trying to get what's in your head out so that you have something to work with and I think that's really important um because that's definitely really hard to do especially the first time you're trying to do it so. the other thing um in this little area that I had marked was talking about having the time and yes. it's how you have to make the time it says only you can make and defend the time you need for your work which I think is very true yeah and so. I like how he talks too in that area where he says even like making the time never gets easier even the more you write you're always going to have to defend and make the time for yourself it's not a thing of where like just if you hit it big or you're published or whatever like all of a sudden you think you're going to have all this time like you're still going to have to make it for yourself so I don't remember what he was talking about here he's talking about like how you write or what you write and he's talking about Gabe, Gab, Gabriel Garcia Marquez yeah I can say it right um says I didn't know that anyone was allowed to write things like that I cannot tell you how many people have sat in my office astonished to discover that they that they were allowed to write the way they wanted to write. That it was okay to say what they had seen and thought and imagined that it was okay to say it their way. Yeah. I just thought that was a good point that you get told like how you're supposed to write, yes. how a story is supposed to be structured, um, what is or is not a good idea. Yeah. And I think when it comes down to it, if you have the ability to tell that story well, and it's outside of any of those like constructs that people try to put on you, then you can do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's yeah. the one thing I really enjoyed about this book is that he would sometimes bring up like a topic and give you two slightly different ways to view it. Like there are some authors where he, you know, they'd be like, you have to do it this way or like whatever. But then he'd be like, but... So and so um, said the opposite. opposite. Mm -hmm. And and it basically boiled down to that there's no real rules for writing. Like, yeah. Like any rule that you can think of when it comes to writing a story, there's someone who's broken it and been good at it before. Yeah. So um, even with the first draft, he said yeah. do it quickly. But then he talks about some people who make really slow first drafts, but then like yes. their second draft might be faster right. or something like that. Um, yeah. So he always provided an example of yes. 
that. So basically whatever your process is that works for you to trust Trust it. Trust, trust yourself. Trust it and don't try to just yeah be someone else because that doesn't work. Yeah, and uh, he does talk in there about how people would get paralyzed and think that they have to do something a certain way or like not trust themselves again going into the trust thing and it's basically like he says like don't don't think you have to do it a certain way because then you won't do it. I really, I really liked the way the book was set up, mm -hmm. and that it referenced a bunch of different authors and kind of gave you different viewpoints on the ways that they all worked. So. And then, um, let's see, the writing life was the next one. Yes. And he talks about the four prime disciplines: are imagining, observing, reading, and writing. Yes. And then this quote I really loved. He says, "The intellect can understand a story, but only the imagination can tell it." Yes. I thought that was really cool. That he talks funny. a lot about like feeding your imagination, and then, um, so it goes into like imagining, remembering, I don't know the other ones, observing, and then reading, so. Yeah. And I thought the reading thing was interesting because of the whole, um, he brings up that, um, oh, he's, I think he brings up Stephen King saying something about, um, If you don't have time to read, you don't have time to write. Right, like, he's like, I can't imagine, or like, I can't tell you how many times I've had people tell me that they want to write a story, but then they say they don't have time to read, and it's like, how can you write a story if you haven't read? Like, reading is kind of like, and, it, and a lot of it, too, goes into, like, sometimes you need to read a bunch of different stories to figure out how the writers made them work, and, yeah. and all these rules that they were able to successfully break, or like, you know, rules that you're imagining in your mind. Something about how you really want to immerse yourself in a bunch of different genres, and a bunch of different books, and absorb everything, because that'll make you a better writer. So. Yeah. I think that might be the one thing that I've heard almost every single author yes. give as advice, is to read broadly, like read a bunch of things in what you're trying to write, because you need to understand your genre, but then also read outside of that, because you you might get inspiration in other places. You don't want to just sound like everyone that's, you know, you want to yes. you want to broaden what you're saying, yes. basically. Let's see, one more thing I had highlighted in this chapter was dishonesty, dishonesty about what really pleases your imagination is outright dangerous to you as a writer. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Because we kind of, um, it was talking about how like people will lie about their tastes. Like they'll, I remember reading something online once where someone was like had their favorite book that they would tell people and then their real favorite book. Yeah. Um, so basically, don't, if you're not someone who writes, you know, literary fiction, then don't force yourself That's to write fine. literary fiction. Write whatever makes you happy. Exactly. Yeah. And write the stuff that you love because otherwise it's going to show that yeah. you're bored with what you're doing and yeah. everyone else is going to be bored reading it. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. All right, so the next chapter was shaping the story. Was there any specific chapter that like spoke to you more than the others? Um, honestly, kind of the first chapter, but just because I think of where I am in the writing process, so just reading about like, you know, not needing permission to write, just sitting down and doing it, going through your first draft, all that stuff, I think is what really spoke to me the most at the moment. But what about you? What, since you're in a different, um position in your writing career and stuff like that. I I actually like this shaping the story. I like the way the only way to find your story is to tell it. Yes. Um, that since I've been trying to switch from being a straight up pantser to yeah. somewhere in the middle to a planter, um, I really liked reading that over and over again in yes. this that like you kind of just have to actually write the story to figure it out. So I've been I just finished an outline for my current project yeah. and it's a very bare bones outline it's just kind of gives me somewhere to go as I'm writing and like some touch yeah. points so I don't get too far off course and it's easier to um, revise when I'm done yeah so I really liked the fact that because in the past I've had a hard time because when I outline I'm just like I, this doesn't make sense I don't know what the story is yet and um, I still feel that way about this yeah. project, even though I feel like I have a better understanding than I normally do going into yeah. it. I just like that he kept saying that over and over and yeah. over again. And I think Anne Lamott says the same thing, Stephen King says the same thing in their book. So it's something a lot of people have said. Yeah. I just like that reinforcement. I did, um, it was funny because when I was reading this stuff, especially about story structure and plot, um, I thought it was interesting because I was thinking of you because um, of the way you write or whatever, mm -hmm. and it said kind of like, you know, plot is what happens to the character or however he said it, right? 
or stories what happens to the character plots how you get there something yeah. like that and then and then the, when he talks about like sometimes you just have to pick a character and run with them and that's and then the the story and the plot will come from that and that kind of made me think of you because you always talked about how you had a harder time coming up with like a plot or a story um for your characters and so i was like oh i hope this is something that kind of helps ally in that regard especially when they talked about also where you have like you have to answer the question like what does this character want right um so that, i thought that was kind of interesting the way he helps you almost like because if you if you are a person who comes with the characters he helps you kind of figure out how to come up with a story from that character and how to just kind of like start working on it and you basically you know he's saying like oh at some point you're just gonna have to like get there but then he also talks about how if you just come up with a plot like someone he has a quote from one writer that says that she knew like what the last line of her story was gonna be and then she basically had to work backwards from there to figure out how it would get there so it's like either way you start you can build to a completed book basically mm -hmm. you just have to kind of follow like a pathway regardless and you'll find what you need to find to kind of get there yeah which i thought was interesting so going from there the next one is on making characters live and i had highlighted where he says story is character and character is story and then at one point he talks about um you have to have story before you have plot which is kind of just yeah. what you were saying like how they all tie in together and then I highlighted to pick character against story is like trying to walk on one leg. Of course, any little stroll starts out on one leg. Your first step may be a clear situation without clear characters or the reverse, but after the first step, you're going to take a second and then a third, and it's on both legs that you will walk. I thought yeah. that was a good way of um, describing it. <clears throat> and then he talks about round characters. Yeah, I thought and, that was interesting. Yeah, distinctiveness. So he, he just gives a lot of information yeah. about characters as well as each character's voice and dialogue and inner speech, which I thought was really cool. Because a lot of times people talk a lot about like dialect, but you don't hear a lot of people talking about each character's inner voice, which right. I thought, was, I thought yeah. was pretty cool. Um, and then inventing your style. This, I like this chapter a lot too, actually. Yeah. I think I like them all. I mean, it's a, like I said, I think it's a really good like book that kind of just goes over like the entire process without like focusing on like one specific thing so it's not like a thing where you know there's especially when I got to the, the stuff about like revising and stuff like that that's something that I couldn't really understand or the process of as much as I haven't gone through it yet but like I'd also say that if you're at that point you want to like get into more about like revising your drafts and stuff like that you might want to pick up another book about that because it, it just touches on everything. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's basically like a book to get you started and gives you like the basis of everything that you need. So it's a very good beginner's guide, I think. I think so too. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I'm going to skip over the next two because it's just, or yeah, just, yeah, it, fine. it yeah. goes into style and then um, the story of self, which, you know, you can just, you can get the book and read it. Yes. <laughs> um, and then we get to working and reworking and, um, I like what this said about showing a first draft. It says keeping the door closed can be hard. That's what, how Stephen King puts it in on writing, is that you write the first draft with the door closed and you edit with the door open. Yeah. So basically the first draft is just for you. That way you don't edit yourself at all. Yeah. Um, you yeah. just write whatever comes to mind and then anything that you think would be embarrassing or you don't want other people to see, you wouldn't get rid of. Yes. So that way you find kind of the truth of the thing. Yeah. But anyway, it says, keeping the door closed can be hard. You naturally want to connect. You want to show the stuff that seems good. It would be nice to have somebody tell you you're not crazy. <laughs> Resist these temptations. The wrong feedback now can flatten you with a touch. Even a fully justified criticism can intrude on what must be a personal process. And of course, blundering criticisms will only mess up everything. Give yourself a chance to think while the story is still like a field of freshly fallen snow, absent of any tracks, save your own. I like that. And then basically like for your first draft, you just figure everything out and then you show yeah. it to people once you've figured out the story. Which um, if you've read on writing, Stephen King talks about that a lot. And that kind of goes into something that was in the big, more towards the beginning of the book where he talked about how sometimes people try to, with their first draft, try to write the way they think they should write. And they talk about like, don't, because you're not going to show anybody, don't 
try to write with the language or whatever as you are writing your style and your language will come out naturally so yeah. you just have to kind of develop it you can't just force it yes so. yeah um and then he has some good notes on re revision um he was saying he, re he reads through it really quickly which is what most people say but i liked his the way he would note um notate his manuscript wrong cut or improve needs work sentimental good <laughs> and then my favorite is um the acronym m-e-g-o my eyes glaze over yeah it's like that's that's a good one because obviously if that's happened with you and you wrote it it's right. gonna happen to everybody else yeah um some general rules for revision. Um, <clears throat> basically, like you are revising the story first. Right. The first thing you're doing is revising the story. Um, I highlighted don't polish a mess. So basically, after your first draft, you don't want to work on grammar and that kind of thing. Yeah. You're, mas you're basically working on the story structure. Yeah. And that, fixing, that stuff can come later. Yeah. When you have your everything down and the only thing you need to do is work on grammar so. yeah so he talks about revising for plot clarity developing the undeveloped so basically you're just going through yeah. and you're fixing yeah. the book and then he talks about cutting everything by 10 like percent that. yeah and i like the quote actually from um i don't think you have it highlighted but it's the quote from fred astaire once gave this advice to a young a filmmaker make it as good as you can then cut 10 minutes so that's where it, the 10 percent comes from yeah um and i I think that's true of a lot of movies now. Yes. Especially comedies. There's yes. like, like always I think they're too long. Um, Ow. I also like to revise out loud because yes. I just saw that right here and I thought that was really interesting because it is true that sometimes if you speak something out loud, you'll, the like whatever, like the clunkiness or whatever will I come think it's, through. Yeah. I think it, that helps with any of it, but especially the dialogue. Yes. Yes. It feels so awkward to sit in a room by yourself and read your dialogue out loud though but anything else yeah <laughs> and then I also like this rewrite from memory so if you've really got a story that you like and you enjoy but you just have a big mess on your hands mm -hmm. he talks about sometimes you can just put that away and just start from scratch and a lot of times that will end up being like more structured and more what you're looking yes. for kind of thing and then the last one was about finishing and I didn't really highlight anything in that chapter um because it's kind of after the revision process right. and I'm, yeah, Not really like you were yet. saying, yeah, yeah. so it's, I read it yeah. and it was good, but I might go back to that later. I really yes. liked this book a lot, I and I, too. because of the front and the, um, the fact that it's like a book on craft, I thought it was going to be a lot harder to read, yes. but it's a super fast read. Yeah, yeah, it's really fast, and I, like I said, I do like that. I just, I just love the fact that he gives you, like, basically rules from different authors, but it's, like, contradicting stuff. So it'll be, like, one author says that you should do it this way, but then this other author says that's fine. And then, like, like when they talk about notebooks or whatever, they'll, he'll say, like, um, which I thought this was actually a really good point, um, with carrying a notebook around, or you can even just use your phone now, but it's, yeah. like, don't ever think that you're going to remember something. But then there are some authors that think, that say, oh, if it's, if it's really that good, you'll remember it. But, yeah. I like also the idea of just like write every story idea down because at some point you're gonna come up with something from it all. Yeah. And that's that, like I definitely have like a bunch of just little snippets and like ideas written down and you know maybe one day I'll look at it and at something new and be like oh well this is appealing to me now but it's definitely I think. Yeah. I have a lot that I look back on and I'm like what? Yeah. Because I'll it, wake up yeah. in the middle in the morning or like be trying to fall asleep and I'll have an idea and I'll like jot it down yeah. and when I find it later I'm usually Usually it's not a good idea, but, but that's okay. Yeah. Maybe one day I'll think it is. And, and not every idea has to be a good idea, too. Yeah. But, but yeah, I but I was going to say I really I really liked how he would, because then there's definitely authors who were like, don't don't use a notebook or whatever because of whatever reason. So the, he gives you the different viewpoints if there's, you know, one appeals to you more than the other. But for the most part, he's just very, I think, um, welcoming to to writing in general, just yeah. being like, if that's what you want to do, do it. Hey, future Nicole coming in, editing this video, and somehow I lost the end of it. I don't know what happened. So to just really quickly sum up what we're missing here, which is pretty much just the outro, we both just agreed that we both give the Modern Library Writers Workshop a book two thumbs up and highly recommend it for anybody who is a writer. And our next book for September will be Bird by Bird by Anne Lamont.
And that's it. We'll see you next time. Bye.